All right, so hello everyone and welcome to our very first dig digital event about our community challenge. Our team has been working very hard to prepare this event for our community. We're so excited to kick off this launch with a stream dedicated to showing you how you can submit, what the challenge is, and what makes a good submission. So I am Arielle Mella. I am a developer advocate here. And I'm Hazal. I'm also a developer advocate here. And Hazal has been leading the effort behind the community challenge. So I would love to welcome Hazal to speak more about the community challenge. So in your own words, what is this community challenge? Awesome. So it is basically an online hackathon slash contest for six weeks. And what you're going to try to do is add an AI enhancement to a device. And this device can be your MacBook computer. It can be an IoT device. It can be um, a Raspberry Pi, so any type of board. Um, and what you're going to basically do is enhance the device using AI. So if, say so, you have a security camera, but it's not doing anything smart, you can add the AI enhancement to make it smarter. Um, this could be adding an ML model. This could be training an ML model to do something specific. It could be using LLMs um, to may maybe talk to your device. It could be doing generative audio. Um, yeah, so we are super excited to hear about your ideas and see your submissions. And we would like to use this time to make sure that your submissions are great. Yeah, that's an awesome explanation for the challenge. And of course, if you want to read in more depth, um, we do have a submission slash community challenge page on our website. I will link this at the end of the um, stream. But I guess one of my questions to you is what inspired um, this community challenge? Um, personally, I love joining hackathons. Uh, this includes submitting my own projects to actual hackathons and joining online contests, but also being on the sponsoring side um, recently, we went to PenApps, for example, and I had a great time um, interacting with people and like teaching them how to use VM and some of the projects too. Um, so that's, I think, the starting point. But I also am coming from an educational background, uh, which is like a proof that I'm very excited that this is a guided challenge and we are teaching people how to use VM. And I think that's very impactful, um, along with creating a space for people to join our online community and the participants to be able to collaborate with each other and join our Discord sessions um, because we will be hosting sessions on machine learning and we will be hosting sessions on computer vision and um, creating modules for the registry. So it's going to be very interactive. Um, and I think that's very exciting for me uh, from an educational standpoint. Yeah, absolutely. And I love hackathons or like community challenges because it's also a great way for people to get their hands on a product, a new tool, um, because you're not being introduced to it, you know, through, you know, documentation or like, you know, traditional demo, like you're going straight into it and you're building something. And in my opinion, also coming from an educational background, that is the best way to learn about something and to learn new skills, you know, and honestly flex the ones that you have. Yeah. And it's like you also get access to our team of engineers. So I think that's very important because as you build something, you're going to get hands-on experience um, using the tool, but also like asking questions about the tool and like finding bugs and potentially improving the product. So it's very important that you have access to all of the developer advocates and rest of our engineering team. Yeah. Um, why is this community challenge so important to a developer community, you think? Um, I think that obviously the main thing is like ability to grow new skills and showcase the skills that you already have. Um, also having access to our very amazing community that we have on Discord, but like also the team. Um, being able to create an open source integration could be one. We have a modular registry where you can write drivers for components and services. And by joining this challenge, you also have opportunity to be in that community and also using the existing resources that we have in the modular registry um, and also like collaboration with others and there's obviously monetary prizes attached to it. Yeah, honestly beautifully said and that's an excellent segue to our next section of the stream. So now here's where we talk about the actual details of the challenge. Again, these can all be found online. We'd love to go over these with y'all 
today. Um, and by the way, feel free to drop any questions as they come in the chat. We do have a chat moderator. I also have my eyes on the chat too. So feel free to jump in and ask anything at any point and we'll be more than happy to answer. So in terms of prizes, that's honestly one of my favorite yeah. of making things. I mean, obviously making things is great, but you know, we love, we love a good prize. Right. Tell us more about the prizes available. Okay. So we have up to 4,000 in total, um, in terms of prizes and perks, the top, like the first place is $2,000 in cash and second place is a thousand dollars. And then three runner ups gets 200. Uh, you will receive this money as a visa gift card. Um, and then all of the winners will also get a VM Rover, the second one. And if you're working in a team, you will share these prices. If you're alone, everything's going to be yours. And we are very excited about it. Yeah, I honestly, I love that we're doing cash prizes, but winning a Rover is also really special too, because you can have your own personal dev kit, your own personal robot to continue building on our platform and building on the ideas that you started off in the community challenge. So go go for the prizes, go for the prizes, y'all, and the glory. Um, what about the judges of the community challenge? So who, who is in charge of picking which projects are great? Yeah, uh, so it's gonna be me. Um, as I talked briefly about myself, I'm a developer advocate here and I'm leading the challenge. It's gonna be Elliot, who's our current CEO. He's also the previous co-founder of MongoDB. Um, and we have Kahari, and he's a computer vision engineer here at VM, but he also holds a PhD in the same field. That's awesome. And you can find um, their bios as well in the Community Challenge website, which we can drop a link or, you know, anyone in the team here want to drop a link in the chat. And you can read more about those folks hosting the challenge. So very excited to see what comes out of that. Um, I guess in terms of projects and judgment, that sounded mm -hmm. a little ominous, but um, <laughs> what what is the criteria that makes a good project? Mm -hmm. So I think the first one is like how effective the project, like how effectively the project uses the VM platform. This includes the VM server, VM SDK, uh, the app itself. So making sure that the project actually utilizes VM is like the one big one. Uh, the second one is how clear the design and technical decisions are for the project, um, how functional it is and like how complete the project is. Um, the third one is how applicable the project is to different use cases. So if you can create something that's reusable within other engineers and use cases, that's awesome because obviously who doesn't want to inspire other engineers. And then the last one is how clear and polished your documentation is. Uh, we are going to talk a little bit about like what makes a good documentation, uh, but mostly what I'm referring to is like, can people replicate this project by just looking at your documentation? Do you have step-by-step -step, um, instructions on how to install certain things and like how to run certain things? Um, again, is it functional? Does it include photos and videos? Those are all um, important to add to your project submission. Yeah, absolutely. As a de developer advocate, like most of our job is documentation and mm -hmm. making resources for our community and other people to follow along. So it, we hope that, you know, when you're building these projects, you know, good, thorough code that is readable, a good readme and at the bare minimum. And again, we'll show some examples of that. Um, and I guess a next thing we would like to discuss is coming up with a good project. So I feel that coming up with a good project and brainstorming is one of the most crucial parts mm -hmm. of developing a good project. Of course, execution is very important yeah. as well. Uh, but we would love to share some like tips and trips, tricks and some perspectives on how we would brainstorm. So what is your number one tip on how, how to start on this project? Yeah, um, I usually prefer starting simple. So I have an idea of like something simple. This is something I can add to my coffee machine or like maybe I have an alert on my fridge that alerts me if I'm missing milk, so like something very simple. And then after I get that going, I usually extend and add more capabilities and functionalities to the project. Um, there were cases in my career where like I would start a project and it would be very complex and the scope would be very big and then it will take a lot of time and like I'll get discouraged in the middle. So starting simple lighting is good. Um, I also do a lot of brainstorming before I settled on an idea. 
So if I know that, okay, I want to add an AI enhancement to this device, I usually make like a map or a list of everything I can add. Um, someone said big scope and T is very real. I know. <laughs> um, I usually like brainstorm and then I try a few of them. So like I'm very big on prototyping. I usually prototype either like look at feel of how the device going to look like or just the technical side of things to see if it's doable. And then I decide on the final um, project that I want to submit. Yeah. Um, a, a proof of concept or prototype is so important. And I know we are supposed to say something like this, but I truly believe it, that VM is an excellent platform for prototyping and iterating quick, quickly as well. Um, you can start low level and put together your hardware or configure um, some software integrations quickly so that you can focus on the technical and actually producing a finished product faster rather than getting in the nitty gritty at first and trying to figure out all of that. Um, so that's great. I think one other tip is uh, checking the registry. So our registry have a lot of like team contributed, but also community contributed components and services you can add to your devices. So before creating a new one, I would always advise like looking at the registry for a see what you can use and then see what's missing from the registry and like potentially the thing that you build could be a really good contribution to the open source community. Yeah, absolutely. And even in thinking about contribution, say your idea, you know, part of your idea does exist on the registry, you can also contribute to that repo and improve it. You know, there's no wrong way to approach this. Um, it's all about just like making something that, you know, inspires you, sparks joy, and is also very usable. Um, my biggest advice for like how I would approach the challenge is I, I know that we hate like big scopes and tiers at first, but I do like thinking large at first, coming up with that really um, big idea. What, how far can I stretch this? And then working backwards. I have this huge idea and this big implementation of some like fantastical AI thing. Then I like to go to the docs and see, you know, exactly as you said, what is built into the platform that I can leverage for that big idea. What, as you said, what exists on the registry and, um, then narrowing and whittling it down. I know that sometimes people get discouraged in the ideation phase. Uh, because they're afraid to think bigger because they're like, oh, well, what if I can't do this? What if I can't do that? Um, well, good news. You can do a lot with this platform. And the whole point of this challenge is building your own integration. Um, so the sky is actually the limit with this challenge. And I think that's very exciting. We also have a lot of demo projects that we added to our um, landing page. Um, we have a bunch of tutorials in our website too. And I think that's also a great place to start for inspiration because you actually get to see some applications of these um, like of machine learning and computer vision and large language models and that's like I, I personally love going to museums and getting inspiration and like yeah. checking social media and Pinterest and getting inspiration and like going to certain instructables and see what other people are doing and like sometimes you can even like find ways of implementing AI and VM to an existing project of yours so you can like find a project that you already was thinking like we're thinking about and um, wanted to implement in your life, like maybe you want to make your house smarter and you had this idea and like now you can use VM and AI to um, actually make money from that idea, which is great. Yeah, that's that's a great point. And I love your analogy about um, gal you know, museums yeah. because we've actually curated kind of like a micro gallery of our favorite projects. Um, so I would love to share my screen now and go through some of the resources that we've compiled for um, the challenge, and again, these can all be found on the resource guide for the channel. It's organized in the same folder as the challenge chat is, um, but you can also find them here on this page. So can I get a thumbs up in the chat if people can see my um, screen? You might have to click it to make it bigger. Um, yeah. So yeah, feel free to click the screen and then you can enlarge it if you have trouble reading text. And if you want me to zoom in on anything, just let me know. Um, so here's the beautiful landing page for our community challenge, which details everything that we just went over. Um, there's also a registration button. I mean, I love the way that looks too, um, where you can sign up for our very important email blast. Registration is important because one, we can keep track of who's submitting what, and two, we are sending regular emails with tips, tricks, um, 
links to the digital events um, and also it's a great way to receive support um, from the chat for the challenge. So um, also here are the different categories for our challenge. Sustainability, you know, designing a robot or smart device that can help save the world, save the planet. We love that. Home automation, as has all said, you know, making your uh, smart lights smarter. Personal assistance, LLMs is probably the best way to go for this one. And wildcard entry. Say your idea does not fit into the aforementioned categories. Again, the sky's the limit. You can come up with um, whatever you want. Somebody said, who's going to build the smart house? <laughs> I don't know. If you if you build a smart house, I think you're going to need a lot more than $2,000 to actually build it. <laughs> but um, and obviously, who should join all of y'all. And um, in terms of what to submit, we want your projects to be hosted on either Hackster IO or Instructables. They also serve as a great resource for other projects, um, inspiration, et cetera, and also just getting visibility on the things that you make. So we accept both of those websites, Hackster IO and Instructables, um, for project submissions. You will then um, submit through a Google form. And again, we will be sending emails out with all of this information closer to the deadline. Um, so don't worry, we will remind you to submit your projects. Um, and Google form, very simple. Your name, email, project theme, link to your project. If you do the extra credit and do some photos and videos, obviously extra points all around for some great documentation, um, but not necessary. And, you know, double optional, contributing to the registry. Contributing to the registry means that you are enabling other developers, other startup um, owners, and, you know, whatever, um, to use whatever integration you make and load it onto their robot or smart machine. Again, optional, but a great recommendation um, if you want to contribute to the open source ecosystem that is the registry. Mm -hmm. And, of course, your registration goes here and more information about our judges, the criteria, which we just went over. And here's the gallery that I was talking about. So here are some of our favorite favorite projects, both VM written and community contributed, um, or you know, projects that have been created at hackathons um, that all involve AI or machine learning or smart, smart integrations. Um, so you can always use these as a launch pad for any ideas that you want to come up with. Or say you've never touched AI or VM ever, start with one of these projects and enhance them. Again, there's no wrong way to approach this, but we're, we curated some of our top projects um, for you to use as a resource. And then of course we have our standard documentation and starter guides um, for everyone to follow along and a full schedule of live events and i i run all the live events here so you'll be seeing a lot of me in the streams um and we want to make sure i guess i'll stop share or no uh we want to make sure that these live streams help you and we want you to walk away from these streams not only knowing more about the challenge but learning more about how to use VM or how to like kickstart your ML AI ideas to the next level. So we have a series of streams. Guide me will be videos like this where we are short of showing you how to do something. Um, how to will be um, technical product tours, how to use uh, machine learning and computer vision. That will be like a straight up tutorial. And then we have the teach me sessions, which are really cool project overviews and showing how people used real AI LLM integrations to create fun demo projects. Um, we have a question that says, once we come up with an idea, can we discuss that with anyone from VM team like any mentor from VM? That's amazing because the session right after this one is a brainstorming session. So we want all of you to come there with ideation, maybe, you don't know if the machine learning model you want to use is good for the specific project that you want to make. You can ask us, we can guide you. Um, maybe you want to ask, do you, do you all support TensorFlow? And then we can say, 
yes or no, you know, like a any idea that you want to come with us, obviously mm -hmm. there will be time for you to brainstorm and get access to the team. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, the text channels are also a great way for you to reach us asynchronously. Um, we have the challenge chat dedicated to coming up with ideas. Um, I think it's a safe space where you can throw your ideas out there, get real-time feedback, real-time criticism, so you can iterate not only just from our, not just from the VM team, but also the community around you. I mean, the community here is full of really talented developers and roboticists that all have their own unique perspectives and takes on how to approach problem solving. So um, thank you for that question. And the answer is, come here, you will get help from us. And again, check our Discord events and obviously join the brainstorming one if you have time, because that will be the place we, where we will like talk mostly about just project ideation. And we will have a lot of cool ideas that you can implement. Yeah. Maybe we can do like a, a whiteboard session where we do some like mind mapping or some cool design thinking exercise. Um, the um, brainstorming AMA will be pretty free form. Um, so we hope that people come with some ideas, some questions, or people come with no ideas and we can all work together and build something cool together. And I think we talked briefly about like what makes a good submission and what makes a good read me. So maybe let's talk a little bit about examples of certain read me's and how they're structured and certain projects and how they're documented. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, if you look at any of our tutorials, um, you can kind of use that as a, you know, model guideline where you could say, I want to write like a, and again, this is optional. I want to write like a full step-by-step -step tutorial. That's hundred percent the way you could go. And you can say, here's the problem I want to solve. Here's how I solved it. Um, and this is how you would go through the steps or even like a blog style would be nice. Um, you know, this is my experience documenting this. No wrong answers. Or you could go um, the traditional route and write a good readme on GitHub for your submission. Um, and this can serve as technical documentation on how you would build and run your project, how you would configure it in app, any prerequisites that you need to run um, your project. And of course, we love to see some good and readable clean code that goes along with that. So that is great and highly recommended. Um, this is a good example of documentation for a hardware modular resource. Um, Huck has all wrote this one. And this is a good example of everything that kind of like checks the boxes for a user to use this. Because not only are we judging it, but we want you to contribute to this ecosystem so that a developer six months from now who's poking around um, looking at VM integrations can also follow along. So think about, you know, the the long, great, the greater good of open source is kind of the guideline. Um, and here's an example for, this is a project I'm working on for like a deep face module. Um, and this is a service module. So the structure looks a little bit different, but again, it's the same thing. What prerequisites do you need? What APIs are you utilizing? And I love visual things. So a little gif of it working, it would, obviously get you extra points on your documentation. Um, so yeah, I would say that's what gets, would get you like a good project submission and um, something that works. Yeah. <laughs> it is also, also a prerequisite yeah. for doing well on the challenge. I'm gonna stop streaming the um, screen now so you can just go back to seeing us. Also, don't you love that we matched today? This was completely unintentional. Um, but maybe we should do this for stream tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so now we have like a couple of minutes left for the stream and we would love to open the floor to some questions um, or some feedback, anything we want to hear from. I see someone's typing. <laughs> so we're really excited too because we have a lot of signups already. Um, so we're really looking forward to seeing what the community comes up with. And I mean, we just launched this two days ago. We have a handful, like, you know, many handfuls of signups and we just, we're so excited. 
Okay, we have a question from Professor D. Are there any credits available if we go over the monthly allotment for the free plan? That's a really good question. Yeah, I will ask about that. Yeah, where, thank you for that question, Professor D. We can um, talk to the right team about that mm -hmm. um, and we can get back to you. I'm sure, I'm sure we can come up with a good answer for that. So stay tuned and we will answer you publicly for that. Um, <laughs> Dawn is fine. I'm not formal. Thanks. <laughs> you, oh, you don't like you know, the title that you worked Professor so hard for? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for the question, Dawn. Um, we will get back to you on that one. Um, <laughs> do we? Yeah. Honestly, if I was a professor or like doctor in my title, like you shall address me as such. Like, I would go to the coffee shop and be like, oh, yes, it's Professor Hussle. <laughs> <laughs> professor Mello, please. <laughs> of course. Um, any, any other questions from the audience? I'm seeing another typing. Yeah. Can you hear me sipping my, my soda? Um, I guess like asking <laughs> great questions. If you have like any requests in terms of what type of sessions you want to see on Discord, please let us know. Maybe you want to learn about a certain type of machine learning model or a certain type of LLM, which LLMs are faster than the other ones. We are always here to like either chat with you on Discord or send you resources or like even do an event um, publicly if it's like a very asked question or like if people are really wondering about it. Um, also, our team is consistently working on technical projects. So outside of this challenge, we ourselves are building um, projects that uses machine learning and computer visions and LLMs. So duration of the sessions, um, we will be also sharing more examples and more demos and we also want to chat with everybody to collaborate. Yeah. Yeah. And in terms of like requests um, for events or like things you want to see coming from us for the community, um, I am the community lead, I guess, at VM. And anything that you want to see, like, I'm happy to make it happen. I would say that these. Um, live streams are really fun and a bit informal. So there's plenty of room. Um, to go over whatever you want as well, because it's not the VM challenge. This is the community challenge. So obviously we want a lot. We want to put a lot of emphasis on making our community happy. And we're going to be recording these sessions. Um, so if you ever miss any of the sessions and you want to watch it again, they're going to be posted um, on our YouTube, but you will be also receiving an email as a like recap of what we did that week. So. Um, you will always have access to the recordings of these sessions. We did receive a question that says, what is your advice for someone that had never done a project like this? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Can I go first? Okay, my advice is to follow one of our tutorials first. Follow a tutorial um, and, oh, done a project like this. Okay, so follow a tutorial and kind of think about the end-to-end -end experience that you had following a guide and following um, a resource that helps you build something from start to finish. And then how would you go forward and replicate that, but with a fun and new idea? Um, so in terms of like documenting your challenge and kind of like thinking about how other people would use it, that is my advice for that. Um, I would say, like, again, I already said this, but like starting simple is very important. So maybe you have an idea and you wanna do, um, smart light and every time your camera sees you maybe you want to turn lights on um it's very important to start by okay let me just have a camera and i see if i can configure that and test it and then after you get that part done then you're like okay now my camera works and i can see myself can it detect me and then you can start googling and like looking at our documentation to see how i can do people detection and after you get that part down, maybe you want that detection to trigger something. Maybe every time you get a detection, you want the light to actually turn on and off, and then you can start focusing on that side of the project. Um, whenever I am like starting a new project and I'm clueless on what the technology is, or I never tried something similar, I try to like break it down into step by step, like what is the first interaction I want to do? What is the first thing I want to test? And then as I, like as all of these 
separate sections work, um, then I can put them together, and then at the end you will have a very professional looking and like very complex project. Yeah. Um, it's also like important to like start reading the docs. Um, if you have any questions on the docs and like how to use VM, how to create an account, how to add, like deploy a model on your um, device, you can always ask us questions. Um, at any time, like you're stuck again, like coming to Discord is always important, especially if you're starting new. Yeah, I, I'm also going to say something. I don't know if this is controversial or not, but uh, I know this is an AI challenge. But not only can you build an AI capability, but you should also be using AI to kind of like help you throughout this process. I know I do it sometimes too. You can use um, tools like large language models, chat GPT, to also help you brainstorm and kind of get the ball rolling. Um, we also, you know, we also have a chat bot on our documentation page, which is pretty good at answering and helping you find that exact thing in our documentation if you don't want to wait for a human response. But we are also, we our models are also highly trained on <laughs> documentation, so we can answer things really well. Um, but I'd also, I think using AI alongside the AI challenge can definitely help you enhance um, your experience as well. Yeah, I also like go to, again, like Hackster and um, Hackaday and Instructables and like Reddit, all of these like different platforms to see if anybody else did something similar. So recently I worked on a cake project where it was basically a camera and like it would take your photo if it detects a certain person and like there was a button that allows you to take the photo and like it would print out um, a number associated with the photo. But the first thing I did was like, okay, did anybody use a thermal printer before? And like, obviously, because it's yeah. very common and like, if you go to Adafruit, there are a bunch of thermal printers that you can purchase and like there are a bunch of tutorials that are like related to these specific components. And then I like go through its code and see like, okay, can I just test this first? And then I test if that works on VM with this specific component that I want to use. And then after I get that part done, I was like, okay, now I want to use my camera and see if I can like print a photo from my camera. And then after I get that done, I was like, okay, now I can push a button and it takes my photo and it prints it out. Mm -hmm. Can I detect a specific person? Maybe I want to take Ariel's photo, but I don't want to take my photo. Can I do that? And then it's a lot of like Googling back and forth and finding example code and projects, but it's always super helpful seeing what other people did. And like sometimes some other people already solved the problem that you have. And it's good to take a look at those platforms to see what exists. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself. Sometimes it's not about reinventing the wheel. It's about, um, I guess, enhancing. Finding the wheel? Yeah, in innovating the wheel. <laughs> Finding the wheel, yes. Like, innovating the wheel. You don't have to completely start from an idea, brand new from scratch, never been done before. Iterate on something that's been done before and make a unique new perspective, new yeah. take by putting it, yeah, putting your own spin on the wheel is the advice and using VM because um, there are a lot of projects that exist out there in Python and whatnot mm -hmm. and don't have VM integrations and they're excellent projects, but they can be better if you use VM. So that is also a great piece of advice. Um, we do have a couple more question, a uh, couple more minutes. So we're happy to take some more questions. Any feedback? Was the stream great? Did you hate it? You can send hate in the comments. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm not. Please don't do that. Um, but we want to thank you so much for tuning in. Um, 3 p.m. Eastern time, wherever you are. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day and joining us um, because this challenge is super exciting and it's just as much for you as it is for us. Yeah. I'm seeing some more questions. What languages does VM interact with? That is a great question. So we support Python, we support Golang, TypeScript, React, Flutter, C++. I hope I'm not missing anything. Python. I, yeah, I think I said Python. I'm not sure. If, if you um, want to know off the top, like, you know, if you're not going to remember this, you can go to our documentation. And there's a drop down um, on the top bar for SDKs in different languages. Um, also in the VM app, when you're generating boilerplate code from the code sample tab, you can toggle through the different languages um, that we support. Yeah. Um, 
Can non-U.S. people participate also? Yes. Um, the prizes will be uh, distributed in gift cards form, so anywhere in the world, um, mostly everywhere in the world. Just check our terms and conditions, um, but I'd say that as long as you are 18 years or older, you are welcome to participate and submit. Yeah. In our terms and conditions, we added the places that we are legally allowed to um, like send prizes to. Um, so please check the terms and conditions to see if your country is on the list. Um, I I think like it probably is. Um, and I think like the only places that could potentially not be able to get paid is like if there's like any tax regulations with US, but yeah, it will be good to check that first. Yeah, and also just because you can't win doesn't mean you can't participate. Yeah. Like if you are on one of the very few countries that we are like not allowed to give prizes to, doesn't mean you can't submit. You can 100% contribute to our uh, ecosystem, submit a cool project, you know, get that spotlight feature from our team on a blog. Um, but as long as you're 18 or older, you can enter. Yeah. But like one reason why we are doing gift cards is so that international people can join. I'm from Turkey, so I will, I really care about people being able to submit from other places of the world. Yeah, and and also VM's like whole mission is democratizing access to you know robotics, smart machines, and bridging that gap. Um, so who who would we be if we didn't allow everyone to join and submit from all over the world? Cool. We have another question. Is it required to create a project that involves devices like Raspberry Pi or Arduino, or can we create something using software from VM but everything done on our laptop and using its camera and microphone? Excellent question. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. You can use any device. Um, obviously, you can use a Raspberry Pi if you want to, but if you don't, you can just use your laptop. Uh, one thing about laptops, though, for Windows, you can run the VM server on, on Windows. So if you have a Windows machine, um, then we also added a link to our challenge uh, landing page on what boards that we support and which ones you can use. Um, but if you have a MacBook or if you have a Linux computer, you can totally use your computer. The smart light example that I gave, um, I was using just my MacBook and my um like MacBook webcam, and then I had like a smart plug that interacts with that. So you definitely are not necessarily have to use an external board. Uh, we wanted the challenge to be very accessible to people who don't want to buy external hardware. Uh, so you will not get any like less points, whatnot, if you just use your laptop. It's totally up to you which device you want to add the AI enhancement to. Um, oh, next question. You mentioned Instructables, but what other sites do you look at for ideas? Um, Instructables, Axer.io, Dev.to is also really good. Also, Hot Take, Medium is a great space for blog posts and tutorials as well because they're a bit um, more high level. So you may not like follow something step by step, but you can learn a lot of interesting insights and get inspiration from Medium as well. Um, I use LinkedIn because I follow a lot of like robotics, IoT type of people. So sometimes I enjoy seeing their projects as inspiration. Pinterest is a good inspiration place, depends on who you follow, like what type of accounts you interact with. Um, I would say like, did you say hack, Hackaday? Hackaday, I didn't say yeah. that one. Hackaday is also great. Um, we can also like type these all up afterwards and we can drop them in the challenge. Even chat. Reddit, like some of the Reddit oh, yeah, like this it. are great. And on LinkedIn, there are like specific groups, like there's robotics group. Oh, Twitter is yeah. also a great, Twitter slash X is a great place for checking out, you know, other developers who make things. Um, Adafruit has really good tutorials on like specific components too. Like it's always like linked to a specific component if you mm -hmm. need some inspiration. Yeah, and there was like one more I was thinking of. I think that's good. Um, yeah, Spark, Spark yeah. One. That one's good. Yeah, there's a lot of different places that you can take inspiration from, for sure. I can't think of any more off the top of my head. But it's great. Oh, this is what I want to say. GitHub. Looking at other GitHub repositories and like starred repositories and like re uh, relevant project fields is also a great place to start, especially if you're looking to do an integration 
um, like a module um, looking at other repositories and seeing what you can build on top of using Veeam is also great as well. So like the ones that we mentioned would be more like project oriented and like building hardware or building something and then software, I would say like Reddit, um, GitHub, Twitter. And of course, like it's a never ending list. So we also have a blog. So if you go to our website, we have a blog where we, not just my team, but the entire VM team always posts interesting updates and ideas and demo projects that we are working on, um, some customer updates. So you can always use our blog to get some inspiration too. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's a great way to end our stream inspiration. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's our way of saying, go forth and do <laughs> cool things. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining. Thank you, um, Dawn, Professor D, for linking our SDK documentation as well. Very helpful um, for the stream. And we're really excited to see what people are making. Like, please don't be a stranger chat with us, show us what you're making, ask for help. We are here for you. Thank you everyone for joining. Thank you. We'll see you on Discord. Have a great